Hi, this is Johns Hopkins, and we're back with another one of Baltimore Heritage's 5-Minute Histories. Uh, welcome back, and if this is your first time tuning in, thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to go downtown, and particularly to the Mercantile Bank building on Redwood and Calvert Street. Uh, and I think it's actually the southeast corner of Redwood and Calvert, if you know that intersection. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the building and the 1904 fire. Um, let's start with the building. The building was built in 1885, so before the 1904 fire, um, and it miraculously survives the fire, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, the building was built as a burglar-proof, I think Mercantile called it a burglar-proof vault, um, and that it was. It, was, it had a number of um, safety features, uh, anti-burglar features, that are really extraordinary. Uh, starting with a moat. And I know some of you out there are saying, hey, I've been down to that corner and I've been to the Chesapeake Shakespeare Theater that now uh, wonderfully occupies it, and I don't see a moat. Well, the moat was actually on the inside of the building. And uh, what it was meant to prevent is if you were a burglar and you got into the steam tunnels that run underneath Redwood and Calvert Streets, and you, you tunnel through and you popped, uh, you, you chiseled out rock and you popped through the walls of the Mercantile Bank and you said, aha, I am in the vault of the Mercantile Bank. Uh, you actually weren't in the vault. You were in this dry moat. Um, the vault was actually behind yet one more set of concrete uh, walls and steel doors. Um, and for you, what was worse uh, than being in the dry moat is that there was a uh, up in the um, up in the upper parts of the vault room, the bank, the, the banking room, there was a little stand with a sniper in it, a little uh, restroom next to it. Uh, and we're pretty sure, and he, he, he was up there all day long, probably all night long, and we're pretty sure he had orders of shoot to kill first uh, and ask questions later. The president of Mercantile Bank would, would help take care of whatever ramifications uh, happened after that. So our burglar was, uh, was not only not inside the vault, uh, but was in this dry moat with a, uh, with a sniper uh, staring down the barrel at him. The other crazy feature of the bank, uh, burglar-proof bank, was in the front, uh, the front door. Um, there's two windows surrounding the front door. Uh, and if you look carefully, those windows with enormous metal grates on them have little steps underneath each one of them. And at the appointed hour, uh, Mercantile Bank had a, uh, had a security guard uh, locked on the inside of the bank at night and another security guard walking around downtown Baltimore uh, uh, at night as well. And at the appointed hour, the outside guard would use that little step, grab onto the bar, pull himself up, and peer through the window. And the inside guard uh, would give the all okay or the thumbs up signal. And if the outside guard didn't get that all clear signal, he would come uh, bursting through the doors with guns blazing as well. Mercantile Bank was, uh, was really where Baltimore's wealthy uh, put, their, um, put their money, but not just their money, uh, it, they also put their silver, their jewelry, the deeds to their houses. So the vault of Mercantile was really, uh, was really um, uh, the fact that it was burglar proof made a lot of people happy. And one uh, uh, more than ironic, I think, um, uh, thing happened is that after the building, after Mercantile left the building, it was vacant for a while. Uh, and while it was vacant, um, it, uh, it got broken into, which is ironic in itself. But even more funny is the, uh, the fact that the burglar brought a, a welding torch and tried to cut the main metal uh, vault door off, um, I guess, to sell for scrap. And, uh, and then, so that was kind of funny is to uh, think of that. And then the third sort of layer of funniness is that uh, the burglar couldn't get the door off. Uh, either the welding torch ran out or he ran out of time. Uh, and so if you go see a show at the Chesapeake Shakespeare Theater, uh, it's, if you're looking at the stage, go, uh, go back behind the, uh, the seats on the left and you will see a, a vault door which looks like it got struck by lightning uh, and the, the folks of the Chesapeake Shakespeare have kept that kind of in tribute to what was uh, this, this uh, super ironic uh, instance. Um, I will have to say, if you haven't been to the Chesapeake Shakespeare Theater, it is one of the most magical places uh, that I know of, not just in the city, but anywhere. Um, after the building got, uh, was vacated by Mercantile, it was a nightclub for a little while, and then, uh, and then it went vacant again. And when you think of a theater, you think of a, a rectangle, rectangle. You have a stage, and then you have a bunch of seats. Um, well, the bank building was not rectangular, it was square. So how do you fit a theater into a square box? 
Well, luckily it was square, but it had incredibly tall ceilings. So instead of building your theater horizontally, you build it vertically. And that was the, the genius of the folks behind the design. And just so uh, it just so happens that that um, that verticality in the theater is the same as what uh, Shakespeare's own theater in London uh, looked like. So a really neat coincidence there. I will make this offer. Um, uh, if you've been into the uh, Shakespeare Theater, I, I think you'll share that it is just a wonderful space. If you haven't, um, uh, I encourage you, please go when, when we're able to do that. And if you go in and you don't smile, you let me know and I'll come and buy you a sandwich. I might lecture you over whether why you should be smiling, uh, but if you don't smile when you go in there, you got a free sandwich on me. Um, before we leave the theater, I just wanted uh, to say if you look next door to the theater, you'll see um, the old merchants, um, uh, uh, merchants Club, and there's a plaque on the uh, side of the wall there that says Lovely Lane uh, Church, and that was the uh, space where the original Lovely Lane United Methodist Church uh, was founded, so a little bit of a connection between the old Goucher District and downtown there. And finally, if you look across the street from, uh, look across Calvert Street from, uh, from the bank building, um, I forget what the building is was originally, but it's the Spring Hill Suites Hotel today. You'll see above their front door, to, uh, we're used to seeing in um, cornerstones the date of when a building was built. And if you look above their front door, you'll see not one date, but two dates. On the left-hand side, you'll see 1900, and on the right-hand side, you'll see 1905. And that's because the building was built in 1900, four years before the 1904 fire, um, and then burned, and then was rebuilt very quickly after the fire in 1905. And if you're downtown or you want to make a point of going downtown, it's kind of fun uh, to, uh, to look up at uh, either the cornerstone, look down at the cornerstone or up above the, the main doors to see these dates. And you'll often see two dates, one before 1904 and another one after 1904. Miraculously, the Mercantile Bank building, it, it does not have two dates because it miraculously survived the 1904 fire. Just around the corner from it uh, was the hottest place of the fire, 2,500 degrees. Um, if you know where the Alexander Brown restaurant is, that's what we call the hottest corner. Um, and so the little Alexander Brown Bank building and the Mercantile Bank building just around the corner both, uh, both survived that kind of intense heat. Um, I think we're going to leave it there for now today, so thanks again for joining us. I do want to end, though, with one more thing, uh, and it's a, a, a little bit of a plea for help for Baltimore Heritage. We get a good chunk of our operating costs from the $10 and $15 that you all kindly pay to come on our walking tours and bike tours and behind-the-scenes tours. And we're obviously not uh, doing that or getting that revenue in uh, this spring. So if you feel that you're able, we sure would love a little bit of a contribution of any size, would be very grateful. Um, you can do it either by going on our website, baltimoreheritage.org, uh, or sending us a check, or you can give me a call or send me an email. I'd be happy to help out. Thanks so much, and we will see you again tomorrow.